JT, you get your bones out of that bed now, you hear? His mother's voice seemed to come from way off in the distance, from somewhere just outside the dream he was having. JT snuggled down under the blanket. He wished he could disappear into his dream and drive off in that red convertible. The top would be down because he would be going someplace warmer. I don't know what's harder, getting you in bed at night or getting you out of bed in the morning. Slowly, JT came up from the covers. His mother watched him rub the sleep from his eyes. By the time I get you out of bed, she said, I'm ready to go back myself. JT shivered into his corduroy pants and went out into the hall where the bathroom was. Miss Hill was coming out of the john, and JT turned the radio up as loud as it could go, hoping he wouldn't be able to hear whatever she had to say to him this morning. There were times when he thought she practiced being cranky, but the volume wasn't loud enough. She got right in front of him and said, if I was you, JT Gamble, I wouldn't put those batteries so close to my head. Your brains is liable to get transistorized, and then what? JT felt the blood rise in his face. He wanted to talk back to her, but he went into the bathroom instead. It smelled like cough syrup, as it always did in the winter after Miss Hill had been in. JT wondered if having a cold all winter made a person cranky, or if being cranky made the cold hang on. It was too cold in the john to spend much time wondering about anything, let alone Miss Hill's health, and JT hurried back to the kitchen. His mother had lit the oven and all the burners on the stove, and the warmth welcomed him. He sat down at the table and crumbled his graham crackers into a bowl and poured milk over them. His mother looked at him. I don't want you dawdling around after school today, you hear? Mama Milsey's due in at the bus station at 435 sharp, and you got to be there to see her home. JT watched the graham cracker soak up the milk, then spooned in a mouthful. Now I'm depending on you. You know she don't take to the city much. She wouldn't know how to get here from the station unless you be there to help her, you hear? I hear, I hear. He pressed his spoon down on the graham crackers, waiting for them to get to the right point of sogginess before taking another bite. He watched his mother rinsing out her coffee cup. Finally, he said, I could use a little money for the radio. The batteries is getting low. Those batteries can't get low enough to suit me. The less I hear from that box, the better I like it. Besides, you think I don't know where you got that thing? I'm not contributing nothing to no stolen object. No, sir. Seems like to me you're such a big time hustler and all, you might have thought to steal some batteries too. Oh, mama, you all the time nagging me. JT said, wishing he hadn't brought up the subject. In today's reading, we read that JT has dreams that he wish he could stay in. Have you ever had a dream you wish you never woke up from? Also, we learned that his relationship with his mother is very, very tense. What do you think is gonna happen to JT after this section? Stay tuned for tomorrow's reading.